Welcome back to Ghost Wildlife. Today's video, we're going to be showcasing the top five reptile enrichment ideas that are sure to have your reptiles living healthier and happier lives. Now, people might ask all the time, why is enrichment for reptiles so important? Well, they're not like dogs and they can't just go outside in most states year round due to low and high humidity, temps not being right, etc. So, so we as keepers, and I preach this all the time, we have to make sure that our animals aren't just living in you know, a box or, or a cage or whatever. We have to get them out, we have to get them thinking in the best possible way without harming them when they are outside of their enclosure. And I know possibly in another video that I've mentioned, you know, set the parameters, you bought this animal, set the parameters to the way that you wanna set the parameters. For instance, in my reptile room, it's about 85 degrees ambient temperature. So me bringing out avocado, my green tree monitor, we can have them out for a little bit longer, but the humidity might not be exactly where it's at. It's not the highest humidity here, but it's also not very low. So those are things you have to gauge, but there's some things today that I'm gonna show you that you can do in your enclosure to help your animals live better lives. Now I have to say, this video was inspired by an article sent to me and possibly many other customers by Reptilink about some of the top ways to give your animals enrichment. I also have to preface this video by saying this is in no way, shape, or form sponsored by Reptilink or any other company. Um, I do enjoy, uh, you know, companies like Reptilink, uh, Dubia Roaches, um, uh, Missouri Foods, where, you know, especially when you have a lot of animals, they make life so easy with, you know, their their already prepackaged food, whether it's, you know, like Reptilink having like the, the, uh, the a kind of liquidy form of food, and then you have Missouri, who has like the hard form shell of food, and then you have Dubia, who just kind of ships you um, insects in bulk, which is extremely helpful, it helps with breeding insects and helps save a little, you know, money in your pocket. Because as we know in this hobby, in this in this 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 thing that we do with reptiles, whatever you call it, it's costly. All right, now to this list of enrichment that um 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 <laughs> what? A lot of these, uh, well, some of these that were on in the article that um, Reptilink sent. Um, some I had seen and some I hadn't, so I'm sure you'll get something out of this video. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get into these. Top five, that was corny. All right, let's get into it. Starting at number five. Number five, that's 10. Starting at number five. So, target training. None of these are in order, they're just thrown out there, okay? But target training is pretty much, you know, the process of getting your animals to associate touching a target, such as, you know, like a ball on a stick with a reward. So, every time that your animal, um, you know, touches this stick or touches this ball or whatever, you reward them with food and they get used to, um, whenever they see this target, they know that food is gonna be immediately um, behind it. So it's kind of like uh, the enrichment is kind of thinking like, hey, if I put my nose to this, then I'll receive a treat. And after a while, you can kind of get out of that habit, much like a dog. I like to refer all of this training, to some of these training techniques as, you know, training your dog. At number four, that's eight. At number four, I keep doing that, using both hands. I talk with my hands, guys, so sorry. Number four uh, is going to be a uh, swimming technique. So this is one that uh, I usually use whenever um, you know, animals are super stressed out, you know, you have a bitey animal or something like that. Most times when animals are, and you guys can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but most monitor lizards that I've dealt with and animals that I've dealt with, whether it's snakes or monitors, usually, you know, more feistier ones, um, putting them in water, in a nice amount of water, like soaking them, um, they're not so much thinking about wanting to bite anymore. They're more so wanting to figure out how they can get out of the water or just kind of enjoy the, the soaking of the water. Now, let's say your animal is not a biting animal and you know, you're just wanting to use the swim technique for uh, different ideas. So I can see this super beneficial because for instance, say that your, your reptile um, sees like an insect on the other side of your water pool or your tub or sink. Maybe it's small enough to get in the sink, but you can have like an insect on one side of the, uh, or a treat on one side of the, the water basin and your reptile, you know, kind of swim up to it like they are in the wild. A lot of reptiles are opportuni opportunists. <laughs> what? A lot of reptiles are opportunists. And so, especially if you have monitors or something like that, they're opportunists and so, they will get 
food kind of wherever they can get it out in the wild. And so kind of remodeling that, allowing your animal to you know hop in the water or climb something um, is super, super enriching. It's making their brain stink and it's not just something as simple as placing you know a food cup into their enclosure where they're used to it every day. You put that in there or every other day, whatever your food, um, your food schedule is, and they're just used to it. It gets boring. All right, now coming at, coming at number three. I'm not even gonna address that anymore. Stop coming up, bro, stop it. Um, number three is going to be foraging. So again, this is another technique that's kind of, you know, mimicked from out in the wild that, you know, I don't think a lot of times we do in captivity. Again, we usually just open up the enclosure, throw in some food and call it a day. But if, if you want your animal to, again, get that enrichment, get that brain thinking, take some food and hide it within their enclosure. And what I like to do is I like to place cameras within Avocado's enclosure and um, just kind of watch her mannerisms. But foraging is a huge part of this because, you know, if you hide like, you know, again, an insect or hide like a treat or something under, say, like some leaves within your enclosure or under a plant or like, uh, for instance, uh, green tree, well, not green, but just tree monitors in general. Um, I've seen some techniques that Reptiliatus does where it's like, um, you know, putting things in, you know, like a bird box within the enclosure so that the tree monitor has to go in and kind of, you know, dig it out and smell it or smell around the enclosure and kind of piece together, um, you know, where that prey is and attack that prey and eat that prey. It's possibly, to me, I feel like, you know, an animal in captivity does get very, it gets spoiled, especially if you truly love your animals, um, they're spoiled, um, you know, and I love to, I love to feed my animals. I love to, you know, of course in healthy manners, but I love to make sure that they're happy at all times. Out in the wild, that's not the case. They don't have, you know, some human just saying, here, here goes your food. And so, um, in captivity, we kind of get stuck in that habit of like, here, here goes your food. You look down here, here goes some food. Um, and I am a creature of that. And so, again, in healthy habits, you have to do it in healthy habits. But I say that to say uh, that's that's not enriching. Enriching. And so I can not only imagine, you know, if with my mindset that I have and me being in captivity, I would love to know like I still have my natural instincts that God gave me they still work. Like I can still scent out, smell, dig under things, and you, you know use the the tools that God blessed me with to find prey and eat the prey. And I'm sure to me, if I was a lizard, if that was me, or if I was a, a reptile, me finding that I would be so much more proud of that um, of that meal than any other meal possible. Hope that makes sense. On to number two. Yep. We're on to number two. So this one kind of ties into the foraging, um, but this one is more so scent work. So scent work is pretty much, you know, taking say like a rodent or an insect or some type of, uh, you know, very strong scenty animal or prey item. You can't really do this, I don't think, with, uh, you know, like a Missouri pellet, um, but you could possibly do it, you could definitely do it with like Repti Lynx or something like that. You could possibly do it with Missouri pellets. I don't know, maybe you like, dip it in like egg or something or whatever. But I say this to say scent work. Scent work is just like foraging. But in this case, you would take the scent of something. Say for instance, you're like starting on like a piece of log right in front of the, the animal. And you know, you, 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 you drag that like insect or rodent down throughout the, the enclosure and create like a trail and then hide that, that, that prey item under something or in something and watch your animal like, you know, scent around. Use that uh, Jacobson's organ that a lot of reptiles have with their tongue, that forked tongue to kind of, you know, you know, scent around and stuff like that. Like that right there is getting the brain truly thinking because now they're scenting all the way to where that trap is or, well, that's a trap, whoa, I did not mean to say trap, where the, uh, the prey is. Or you could, you know, work on some socialization with that as well, you know, scent that on down to maybe your hand or something and put that insect or or, or uh, prey item right there in your hand and then watch the animal, like I know avocado does that a lot, like she'll, you know, trail all the way down to my hand and eat on my hand and, you know, most times she'll turn back around and hop back in the enclosure or either, you know, roam around and kind of see her thing. Usually she spooks herself out when she does that, but 
Um, that's that's tree modders for you. They kind of get themselves stuck in whatever world they put themselves in. But <laughs> she's getting better. But um, but yeah. So scent work is super super important. But in order for scent working to work, you want to make sure that you're rubbing it on a lot of surfaces within the enclosure so that your animal can smell it and get a strong grasp of that scent and want to find that. And then when they do find it, again, back to kind of talking about, you know, foraging. Me as a, rep, me as a reptile, I would be super excited to know that I found this. This prey item is now like, like hard work that I went out to get, just like in the wild. And lastly, number one. Number one is going to be just puzzle work. This is one that you know a lot of people do, much like target training. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about it, uh, but puzzle work is super simple. Um, Reptiliatus with his green tree monitors do does an amazing job with this. I'm watching that spider, um, but uh, you know he you know holds like these little tubes or whatever, like these little cups, and puts insects in there and watches. Like it's so insane to just see a tree monitor, like any type of monitor really, but Reptiliatus, Reptiliatus again does a great job of like showcasing this on camera, but like the, the, the lizard is like sticking his hand within the, that does not look right, but the, the, you get the gist. He's like sticking his hand in like the cup, much like, like a human, like sticking it in and like, like trying to get this insect. And he's like looking, you know how reptiles have that like quirky, like, like movement. Like he's like looking inside the, 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 you see the video, it's right here over top of this, but it's, it's insane. But puzzle work allows your animal's brains to think as well because it's not just as simple as, you know, trying to lift up something or, or whatever. Like this is something that is pretty extreme. Um, and you know, when your animal starts to grasp how to get things out of that, it's kind of like a dog in a cookie jar. You know, they're finally got their hand in there and they're like, oh, well, Cookie jar isn't hidden for me anymore. I know how to get in there now. But reptiles can do the same thing and it's been proven um, time and time again. And again, Reptiliatus does a great job of showcasing this. Now, before I wrap this video up, I do want to say I do have a bonus for you guys. So stick to stay tuned to that. But I also have to say, don't feel discouraged if you feel like, you know, some of these aren't working. This is, you know, these enrichment ideas are things that you'll have to work towards, much like socialization. But these enrichment ideas can also be conjoined as socialization as well, which can be a double-edged sword to where you can knock out two birds with one stone. Um, but don't ever feel discouraged. I know me, I love to rush a lot, um, but I know my boy Jalil just dropped a video. You guys should check that out. Um, I'll link it down below, but talked about, you know, what is like one of the most important things that reptiles is taught my big camera died on me so we're going to the phone but anyway um what i was saying was that uh reptiles teach you patience they teach you how to be patient they teach you how to take your time and understand that you are always on the animal's time and not your time so never feel discouraged never feel like you're you're behind never feel like things are never going to click if you're patient and consistent it's going to work it's going to work maybe it, it might even take a year it might take two years but the reward for you and the reward for your animal is going to be so, so worth it, I promise. Now, as I promised, we're going to give you guys number six, or number six, six, uh, on the list. And that is simply going to be just trying new food items. Um, you know, maybe there's a food item that, you know, you don't typically feed your animal. Allow them to forage for something new. Allow them to smell something new. Allow them to tr like, trace down something new. Um, you know, if you're always feeding your reptiles, you know, rodents and say for instance, turkey, switch it up, give them some chicken, give them some quail, give them some, um, you know, whatever. Um, I will say when you are trying new um, food items to be sure to um, do the research on what that prey item provides. So um, I'll possibly link down below in the description here in this video, um, a website that I use for feeder insects, um, kind of talking about how much fat they have, how much protein they have, how much um, you know uh, calcium they have in them, uh, so on and so forth. It breaks it down literally within like a chart. And you know, whenever you're out shopping for feeders or online shopping for feeders, um, you can kind of already know what that feeder is providing for your animal and if too much of it is bad or if not enough of it is or i don't know you know what i'm saying <laughs> but that's the that's that's gonna wrap it up for this video i appreciate you guys so much i hope you guys enjoyed and 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 like this video that spider is dropping down on my desk with the freaking we'll handle that here in a second but uh let me know down in the comments what it is that you guys do 
um, with your animals. If any of these work for you, if you plan to try any of these, I would love to know. Like I said, with me, myself, and my journey with uh, avocado here, who I'm gonna try and not to bother too much, but we're gonna see if he's, or if she is, I keep calling her he. Oh, yeah. She's so sweet. She's so sweet. She's still trying to figure out life. She's a new girl, but I'm gonna close that up there. Sorry about that, mama. Sorry about that, mama, but um, I'm definitely gonna be trying out some, uh, some techniques with her to see if anything helps her. And um, she's super active if you guys don't know much about monitors man follow this page because i'm gonna be documenting everything but she does she's wow she's all over the place they're super active um and we're gonna be upgrading this enclosure soon i had a whole video about why she's in this 40 gallon but um my dogs chewed the uh, memory card um my dog chewed up the memory card with all the footage on it so um literally destroyed my cards like just went to town on them so yeah, oof, life, right? But let me know down in the comments if you guys are gonna use these techniques or if any of these techniques are new to you um, or whatever. Um, let's engage in a little conversation and um, I will be sure to uh, comment back to you guys, drop a like and a heart. And um, as always, I love you guys, God loves you, spread love, not hate, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Yay! Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. As I always state, spread love, not hate, and let's educate. Be wild as you chase your goals and your dreams. I'll see you in the next one.